We're here to uh, talk about something that you're building, and that's why I'm in front of the camera this time, because <laughs> Summer is filming, because building is a little bit more on my turf. And what, what have you been building? Uh, it's, a, it's a greenhouse. We, um, okay, let's take a look at it. We've got, uh, we've got like the high tunnel here. Yeah. We've got another one of those to move here still. Okay. Um, and those are great. We found, we're, we're actually still kind of learning how to use them. I, I didn't really understand. They're, they're really, they're, they're good for like season extension in the beginning of the year, especially for us. We have, okay. Um, snap peas, and now we've got cucumbers in there. Right, because what zone are we in here for growing things? Mm, Do you know? What is it, yeah, summer? Five, five, six. Five, six. Uh, six, Quarters. but maybe in a really bad year it might be a four. You know? Yeah, okay. So, But with uh, this you can extend it a lot longer to be able to grow yeah, much more. Yeah, but in the middle of the summer, it's just really, really hot. Yeah. And in the winter, it's no good at all, in my opinion. Right. We, had a, we had a double bubble on it before, and now we've just gone to the single layer just to use it for this. Because what are some of the challenges you have? Because the design of this is apparently good for winter, right? Because the snow can, it can yeah, hold the I snow. Mean, it, it, I mean, it doesn't collapse over the winter. Yeah. But the problem is that w when it's, you know, 15 below on a winter night, yeah. it's 15 below in there. Yeah. And, and then heating it would be a nightmare. the next day it's sunny, and a January day it would be like, you know, 21 degrees and sunny outside and it'll be 75 and sunny in there and yeah. it really tweaks things it's not a good overwintering environment right so it's good for things like kale and thing and like uh spinach yeah winter greens will survive that, it. okay it's not good. he wants to grow things like figs <laughs> and it's not good to overwinter things like that yeah so i'm gonna do that in this well yeah so yeah I what had, i had historically like 20 years ago almost now I was realizing, in like 2004, I built uh, an in-ground greenhouse. Okay, hold, hold on. So you're having trouble with this. It's yeah. not, you're not able to grow what you want to grow in this because the temperatures are just out of control. They fluctuate. Trying to heat this would be, we had would a take a lot it's of energy. It's insane. It's a 100,000 BTU gas heater and the other one we have, and it, it like, it'll go full bore and it will keep it from freezing, but that's about it. Right. And that, you know, it'll use like, you know, 10, 15 gallons of propane. In that. Yeah, so that's ridiculous. So, so what are you, what are you coming up with to be able to grow <laughs> so, the stuff you want so to So what I want to, I just want to moderate the temperature. I'm not really yeah. looking for like growing bananas in the winter or something like right. that. Right, those that, are more that, tropical. You, heat, right. you know, that's just in this climate. Yeah. Um, what I'm looking for is just a more moderate winter environment. It doesn't get quite as hot. Okay. It doesn't get as cold. Yeah. Uh, it's okay with me if it freezes a little bit, but I don't want it to be like 10 below. Yeah. You know, I'd like to stay it, to have it to stay in the 20s. And then if I wanted to heat it to not freezing, I could pretty easily. Right, because now you're already, you have a, yeah, you have a leg up on that. And for the summertime, yeah. I want it to be not quite so hot. Okay. You know, yeah. like it's going to be hot. But, but like, not like this where it just, you know, you have yeah. the heat on the outside that gets in and yeah. then you have plastic that amplifies the heat even more, right? Okay, so, so show us what you're building here. Yeah, so the idea here, so that's, that's what I'm shooting for. Right. And the way that I did it before that worked really well was to actually put the greenhouse partly underground. Oh, okay. And so you tested it somewhere else. Yeah, like tw like in, in like 2004, I built a greenhouse. I don't own the property uh, property anymore, unfortunately. Right. But I built a greenhouse that was basically like a basement with a roof over it. Okay. And it worked really well for what I want to do. So how deep in the ground were you with that? Is it just slightly buried or that completely one, buried? That one was about three to six feet in. Okay. The walls were concrete. Yeah. They stuck up a little bit, a little bit of a knee wall on the outside like yeah. this. So it appeared that when you were in it, it felt like you were like five, eight feet down in the ground. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the walls were totally opaque huh. and just concrete, yeah. insulated concrete. And then it just had a greenhouse roof over it. That was transparent and so light can get through. It was right. the double wall polycarbonate yeah. like I've okay. got stacked up there like I'm going to use for this. And, the, right. and polycarbonate has really different thermal properties than, than polyethylene. Yeah, because now you have an air space between, am I right? It's, or, and it, it has entirely to do with the infrared. Oh, okay. Like, so glass or polycarbonate won't let infrared radiation, they're more or less opaque to infrared. Okay. So the sun comes in and heats the soil during the day, and then at night the soil wants to re-radiate. Ah, and, okay. And, the, and, the, and that polyethylene, like on a high tunnel, is completely, even they put a coating on it, but it's still just like transparent to that. Hmm. All the heat just goes out to the sky in a clear night. 
Huh, okay. Whereas the polycarbonate or glass, even though glass has a cra in. really bad right. R value, mm -hmm. it, it will act like a mirror and reflect that heat back in. Right, so that's just the infrared heat that yeah. comes off of radiating, like the Yeah, radiating so it makes a real difference if you stand in a polyethylene high tunnel on a cold night, yeah. you feel that sky above you, you feel yeah. that cold, right. you know? But if you're in a glass house or a, poly or a polycarbonate house, doesn't yeah. matter whether it's one or two walls even, Right, It'll, the thickness of it. It, it feels warmer hmm. because it's it's like a cloudy night. Interesting. So that's a that it's of course it's more expensive. Yeah. But that's that's one thing that I did before and I'm going to do again to help. So just you to hold the you, heat. And then the other yeah. thing is like, is like I realized that there's this thing going on with the ratio of the amount of glazing yeah. on a greenhouse and the amount of soil, rocks, benches, concrete, water barrels, whatever you want to yeah, do yeah, that yeah. holds heat. And if you have a ratio with a lot of glazing and just a little bit, just a ground, just a flat ground, you're always going to be losing heat faster than you can hold on to it. And why is that? Um, well, because the soil, because the soil it, it absorbs and radiates, right, yeah. at a certain rate. And then the glazing, you know, will radiate through that at yeah. a certain rate. Now you're saying if you have elements in there like water barrels, stones, yeah, or people do all like kinds of things. That can soak up the heat. Yeah. Instead of it, like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a really low grade heat though. Mm. It's not like it's not like a really good solar power where you're going to get something really warm and it's going to stay really warm. It's right. like well, you get up to 42, you know, on a sunny day in January, and it's 42 in there, and it's not really direct sun on anything, but 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 still. The Earth is 45, yeah, down a few feet, and it w kind of wants to be there. It's like a flywheel. Mm -hmm. So if you can keep putting 42 degrees into it every day, you might only go down to 35 at night, mm. and that's what I'm wanting to achieve. Right. So increasing so the surface area yeah. of the the parts of the greenhouse that can hold heat, and decreasing the surface area of the glazing, huh. and of course you can only go so far; it gets dark. Yeah. Right? But because I'm not trying to get something super hot, I found that before it was okay to just have the roof. And it doesn't even matter that much which way it points. You're just getting like ambient light from the sky. Right. So as far as like, let's talk about placement because, you know, you could, you could angle this thing a couple different ways, but it, why have you chosen this specific site here? Be, because of the way the land goes yeah. and because of the way the building not is. Not necessarily where the lights Because there's windows on that from. side of the building that I didn't want to block. Yeah, I see. But so but like you were saying, you don't really need to orient this thing south because it will still work. No, if you I mean, if you want the most yeah. thermal solar performance, obviously. Yeah, you'll have to put. You'd it to go south. south. Yeah. This site, every site's different though, and what I like to do like walk around on a place mm -hmm. and like get you know feel. There's like hot spots. Yeah. You know, everyone has a side of their house that's like the nice sunny spot in the winter and. It might face south. In this case, a lot of it's facing west. Yeah. Because we have this like incredible view off to the west. Um, so this is actually too hot to even work on this in the afternoon. I mean, it is like a oven. Right. This is insane. The amount of <laughs> the amount of like you know heat that it that it soaks that it up in the afternoon. Captures. Yeah. And I found in greenhouses going, yeah. in the winter that often in the morning, it's. Um, it's chilly in the morning, it's cloudy, there's not much going on, and by the afternoon is when the sun might peek through and you actually get a little bit of solar gain. Yeah. So I feel like if you got if you can't be due south, west is way better than east. West is better than east. Yeah. But um, that's the idea. So there's kind of two things here, because there's two things I want to do. One is grow the fig plants that yeah. I have. Uh-huh that I've been doing for years, and I've been trying them in a high tunnel and getting really frustrated. Yeah. They worked really well in the in-ground greenhouse I had before. So this area down here is gonna be for the figs. I see. And I use this kind of Japanese method of growing them where you, you have a cordon on the ground, mm -hmm. and then you uh, have vertical shoots that come up every year. They end up looking like a row of raspberries or something in the summer, you know? They only get like this high. Hmm. Um, and, but they have a lot of figs when it yeah. works. So I'll have three rows in here, three like lengthwise rows, basically. Cool, that's a lot of space. So did that's you dig cool. this it's, out? It's smaller than I, it's smaller than I want. It's smaller. <laughs> but, it's, but if it works, I can do more. Um, yeah. Because, so I, 
so when I went to do this, I was going to do the concrete, and then I priced it out, and everything's for the like, walls. Yeah, these ones. it's so much, yeah. you know. And and I was like, well, what, what can I do that's cheaper? And these rocks, yeah, almost all these rocks came from this hole. Right, they're free. Wow, that's incredible. Like that's a lot of hundred percent free soil. material. So you basically did gabion baskets. My first, okay, so I went, this is my thought process. I went from concrete, I was like, wow, $15,000, I can't do that. Yeah. Then then I was like, what about gabion baskets? And and I was thinking, I've got the rocks, and wouldn't it be cool, so this is just like a connection to the earth. This is all like, it's just dirt behind it, about a foot back, and that dirt is going to be 45 degrees in the winter. So you have like so I'm thinking about in. these guys that run right. these pipes, you know, through the ground, the, you know, this geo aero geothermal yeah, yeah, yeah. thing mm-hmm. that that has taken off. It captures the heat as something's going. And I looked the at pipe, that and like, I'm like, wow, you know, that stuff's expensive now, and like, yeah. you know, fans going all the time. And I was gonna do it, and then I was like, you know, maybe it's just like too much just for figs. It's got to be simpler than that. And I thought, gave me in baskets you've got like a lot of surface area here because it's convoluted. So like that air can kind of go all around those rocks. It's not like right. blowing over them, but you've got probably twice as much surface area there as a concrete wall. Yeah. And that surface is attached to something that's, you know. So you're saying the more surface area you have, the more heat it could potentially It comes back on. to that idea of right. like minimal glazing surface, maximum soil surface connection, right. like earth connection surface. Huh. So this is a way to get more surface yeah. compared to concrete. Oh, I see. It's so not was, just that you're increasing the surface by making like, you know, a staggered wall here. You're also increasing the amount of surface area by just using stones versus concrete. Yeah. Flat surface yeah. concrete. So I'm just, to the whole, it's just, a, this whole yeah. thing is just an experiment. And it is, can I get tw- maybe twice as much surface area yeah. on earthen, rock, heat, absorbing materials so how thick as did you I make have these, glazing? Uh, how thick did you make these walls then? So there, it's about a thick, uh, it's about a foot of stone. A foot of it, stone. It varies. Yeah. This wall in the back, I, I actually excavated. Right, you're like four The feet building high. was here. Like, if I built this in a field, I maybe do a little different. Okay. The building was there. I, I buried um, sewer, electric, and water lines, like all kinds yeah. of stuff, r- along the side of that building, mm-hmm. about halfway out to this wall that cross, you know, all the way across here. It's like the infrastructure buried there yeah. before yeah. I knew I was going to build a greenhouse. So I can't excavate all the way down yeah. against the building without a huge amount of effort. So I'm like, well, I could do this step thing. This this whole block of soil from here to here yeah. is like many, 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 many tons of soil that's oh, yeah. basically inside the greenhouse. Again, another heat sink. Yeah, exactly. Because um, soil will hold on more, to a lot of- More things to make it convoluted. I want the upper area for um, seed starting in the spring for the farm. I just want a, a greenhouse that I, I maybe will put a little heat in in March, yeah. February, March, just to start, start seedlings and uh, do my you know, tree propagation kind of stuff. Well, it's nice because you've increased the amount of greenhouse space so much and you have this kind of stepped design. Yeah. In theory, you could keep going down the hill. You could. <laughs> forever. I know, I know, I thought like, it was. Originally, I was gonna go like 30 greenhouse. feet. I, it's like 28 feet, but <laughs> it's limited by the length you can get the polycarbonate and uh, ah, yeah. not wanting to do a joint. Yeah, you know, then, like a like because what's butt your concern joint. with the butt, butt joints water getting in? I mean, I guess it would. I mean, or you can overlap out. them. I think like shingles. Yeah, but I don't know. It just seemed like nice it, to have it a continuous. It comes in twenty four. I'll go twenty four, and then I'm gonna wow, have a yeah. vent up there, like actually like a ridge vent that opens. So how did you decide to attach it to the house? Because uh, that's always a interesting question there. Because well, how I does water attach it to the house. So the one and... I had before that that one that I had that was concrete was attached to my house. Okay, and it. It was okay, but it created a lot of heat in the summer. It had to be ventilated off oh, yeah. so it didn't come into the house. You didn't want to open that door in the summer. Yeah. In January, it's beautiful. Uh-huh. Open a door. Yeah, you get a little bit of extra heat. summer out yeah, there, yeah. you know, for like a few hours a day. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that you net got heat. You net lose heat hmm. from having a greenhouse attached to a house in this okay. climate. Maybe in Arizona. And that's with like a door or a window open connected to the greenhouse. Kind of like what we saw at Karma's place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which has the greenhouse yeah. attached to her house. Then there's a humidity issue. Yeah. And there's a lot of humidity that yeah. comes off a greenhouse. Yeah, because another thing is you have the 
moisture from the soil yep. and the earth will come through this yep. rock because it's open, right? Yeah. Are you doing anything to regulate the humidity here, or are you concerned about anything? Uh, I mean, it'll be ventilated. Okay. So generally, when you ventilate in the winter, especially the air is really dry yep. outside, so that I really see. drops and the humidity will, down. Yeah. And yeah. how are you deciding to ventilate that then? Are you um, just using like what kind of method of ventilation? Yeah. Are you so using? there's so that so there's going to be on either side here. Mm -hmm. Um, there's going to be swinging vent coming in on either side of this yeah. door. I'll be able to open up the door if I want. The so door, not in the winter, because there's going to be, by putting the door on this side, there's, there's going to be snow there. Yeah. But it's okay, because there's going to be a way into the building just from inside. I in the see. winter, I'm not going to yeah. be walking Yeah, you're not going to have to come out. Um, and then on the, on the peak up there, yeah. the whole length of it, I'm going to have like a three foot wide um, oh, arm that roof can open. vent. Yeah. And I, I haven't done that before. I bought some mm. fancy hardware. It's these like uh, rack and pinion kind of things okay. that uh, work it all from one crank. Wow, and it's just so the whole rotating thing bar go, and the whole right. thing goes up and down as a unit. Um, so that's a way for you to regulate temperature, but also humidity. If it gets too hot in here, air will come in to the building right. from this side and then leave at and the that's top. And that'll be manual, but yeah. then automatically um, I'll have an inlet vent, an outlet vent, and a fan. Okay. And it, it, I have it, it's the way I have the other greenhouses now, even the high tunnels. The, at a certain temperature, the inlet vent opens and the outlet vent opens. Okay. And then a natural convection, one's low, one's high. You know, I'll put one in that corner on the north side yeah. and the other up there. And usually the wind is going this way. Mm -hmm. and, and often that will take care of it, especially in the winter, just opening vents. Just, just and, they're, the and they're just, um, yeah. it's just, you know, it's a thermostat and a 24 volt, just like a house thermostat right, turning on your furnace the... and it has a little um, servo motor, you know, okay. that opens up the vent. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Um, and there's nothing like running when it's open. It's just like you open it up and then you close it. Right. And then the next stage is once those are open up, if it gets a bit hotter, there's a fan that kicks on. You have another thermostat, I you know, okay. I set one at like, you know, 65 and the other at like 75. And yeah, then so then 75 it in the winter, the, fan, hot and the fan will kick yeah. on and that usually cools it off really well. Hmm. And then, nice. and then, you know, when I'm around, you know, if like that would happen, like if I'm at farmer's market selling or something and it's yeah. like gets sunny all, all of a sudden, you know, and gets hot. But if I'm around during the day, you know, one of the things you do is go around and open the greenhouses in the morning and close them up at night. Yeah. So I'd crank open the big vents and then the other ones would be kind of irrelevant. So you have the natural convection going from low to high here because mm -hmm. obviously temperature rises and then it gets yeah. all the air out of the building. Where, where would you place the fan in that case so that you can <laughs> amplify that process? So, so the, 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 the prevailing winds, yeah. you know, are generally northwest to from northwest. southeast yeah. so i would put i would put the fan up in that corner i don't think i will on the side of the building and no on and the, the on the side of the greenhouse uh, okay on the on the end wall yeah on the, on the, the well it would be gable end but it's not you know full but uh i'll probably put it on this end yeah and have it blow north even though that's not quite as efficient because they're loud and you don't want to and i don't want to i don't want it projecting towards the house yeah so I've got it, you know, it'll go off towards, you know, the other greenhouses and right. stuff. I so found it quite irritating at our other I farm bet. Yeah, to have it. I mean, it's like, it could be a loud noise. It can be really loud, yeah. So that pulls air out it's of the so greenhouse. It's so quiet here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's true. You, any, like, even I don't if want to something spoil makes it. a little bit of noise, it's like, it really amplifies yeah. it. There's no background noise. Yeah. So you pull air out from the top and then it will be forced to suck colder air in from the bottom Correct, here. yeah. So you're kind of amplifying Usually, I mean, I mean, this, I'll use the same fan that I use in one of those, which is about twice the square footage. Yeah. And, um, and it'll, it'll keep one of those cool i mean today it's going to be like 95 right so it wouldn't it would still get to like 110 in there hot, yeah but but it does a pretty good job yeah of cooling off and this thing i think it'll work really well so that'll be the kind of thing mostly i think in the winter just the vents will open sometimes no yeah. no fan yeah just the vents will open and it'll just keep it from getting a bit too hot just to get the humidity if i the want heat, the uh, heat I'm gonna have a door in the wall that's the workshop on the other side it's not the house it's the yeah it's the workshop um so I'm gonna have a door in there that I can, um, you know, open up if I want 
to heat that. And then your here. heat will crawl from this space into your house. And yeah. You have free heating, basically, in those for those months. Heat and humidity, which heat is a mixed bag. Humidity. I'm, which... I'm totally cool with it in the workshop. Yeah. I wouldn't I? I'm at the point where I wouldn't do it in my house. For the house, it might not. But yeah. Because How would you it's... get the humidity like down? I guess maybe dehumidifier. Like a dehumidifier thing. or something. Yeah. It's. But now you're running all extra kind. You can do a, in their in indirect system if you wanted to have a greenhouse heat a house, I would do it through like a, like a trom wall or something that would like, right. like hold the heat and then there'd be like almost a separate loop of air with the house. Yeah, and or, that's a wall where you make one side of your house basically the polycarbonate vertical, yeah. right? And then there's a bit of an air space and that gets really hot yeah. behind that poly wall. And then you can circulate. And then you have the heat that wants there. to go up and then you draw cold air either from, yeah, from the inside of the house and kind of automatically heat your, yeah. your space that way. Yeah. That's a really cool design. Have you implemented that here? No, but I was way? talking to my friend Pete Larson is a YouTube star, farm guy. Okay. Um, it sells at market. And he was, he was looking at this and he said that he had actually done gabion baskets yeah. for the same surface area in the rocks thing yeah. that I was thinking as a trom wall on a house he designed once. Wow. So they had... You know, they had like solar glazing, and then a little bit back from that, they had gabion baskets building a wall of the house. Yeah. And the, gab and the gabions would get hot. Yeah. And that kind of just the air from the house. So at night, you it. would have enough heat stored in those stones, or? I don't, I, you know, he was an architect before, so I don't think it was, I don't think it was his house. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can have fun with people's houses. Yeah. Because it's, <laughs> it's always a huge experiment. Because even right now, I'm thinking about how to heat the uh, wood shop that we're building. Yeah. And, I, and it has a huge south-facing area on that barn that it's in. The and problem here is like, like, is like in, it's not New Mexico. So like in January, yeah. like sometimes we'll go 20, 30 days and the sun won't come out the sun at won't all. come out, yeah. So and then what are you going to do? The solar thing is great, work, you know, yeah. for like five days of winter. When That's why this yeah. is, I'm not even trying to do that. You know, it's like not attempting yeah. to be a direct solar capture. It's just general, like the air is going to heat up in here. Yeah, your your wanna... main benefit is just a con consistent temperature from the soil. Yeah, and 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 this is basically here. So we're we're four feet underground here, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's pretty good to begin with. And then on the outside, I've yeah. insulated. Right, because here you're you're putting like four feet of insulation. So out. this is yeah, and that's and that's basically like like. What, what's under this right here is like it's four feet down. My experience yeah. is if you take a piece of two inch expanded polystyrene and lay it on like a pipe or something over the winter, it won't freeze huh. around here. So R10 it's, is enough to... R10 is like three feet of earth. Wow. So when you have, um, you know, if you've got, like we have a lot of irrigation and stuff mm -hmm. that we don't want to freeze over the winter and yep. it didn't always get perfectly drained. So you just throw a piece of foam over it. That's and incredible. It, and With it, dirt it, on top and... To keep or a rock on top or, rock, or yeah. something. I had, I had those pipes there. So just the climate just that it creates, like underneath the foam, is it's warm just, enough. Earth is thing. a really bad insulator, actually. I mean, it takes like several feet of earth to equal that. I see. Yeah. Because the earth is wet, so there's conduction that goes on in there. The right. water really conducts the heat out. Yeah. So just by blocking that, and I think you're doing huh. two things. You're, you're. It's actually just a thermal barrier, and then it's also a. Um, it's a barrier to water travel. I see. So what you're doing here by placing these pieces of foam is just preventing all the heat that's underneath that soil yeah. from being able to even escape. Yeah. And that keeps it nice and warm here, which is really important because this is, from what I've read, is that most of your heat that you're losing is through the side of your foundation. If you're building a house, for yeah. example, like 80% yeah. or Not something. Not the floor. Not yeah. the floor, yeah, yeah, yeah. The floor down is fine. Yeah but just out and you're preventing that heat from escaping now by using this foam. That's the idea. To break a little stone wall yeah. here and a little bit more dirt. I started bringing some topsoil um, yeah. in on top of it. I'll probably do like um, gravel or something right up against the building. It's gonna be a little close. I, I, if, I, if I could do it over, I would make this taller, you know, so I had a little bit more height there. Can you just add something on top, I could or add, maybe just the whole thing? I could add something on top. It's, um, you know, I want that much space for the vent. It'll be fine, yeah. but I don't want grass growing right up against the bottom of the vent. So there. that's so your I'm main issue, little... and then stone will hopefully prevent that yeah. from getting yeah. organic matter in there. Yeah. Cause... It's, a, it's a compromise. Like I'm trying to really trying to minimize the amount sticking out of the ground. Yeah. But you also need enough that you can have ventilation and stuff. 
Yeah, because if you have a bunch of grass growing here, then your whole venting system might be compromised. It probably still. Yeah. They're going to tip out, so it would. Yeah. I would just have to keep it mown, but I think it'll be easier just to. I like gravel around the edge of a building a lot. Yeah. So what's this that's coming out of the wall here? Oh yeah. So. <laughs> you know, when you plan out infrastructure, when you try to plan out the infrastructure, like, yeah. you know, like oh, so two years in advance. Cut so that yeah. are, are packs that go through a convoluted path to our wood-fired boiler. Um, so there's the potential to mm. heat in here. Oh, that's amazing. With the, with the boiler, which would be, you know, a whole lot cheaper than electric or, or propane heat or whatever yeah. for us because we've got so much woods. Um, the the question is do i want to do that because then i can't let it freeze right mm, or i can right, try to do now you have water running in here, and right? a heat exchanger yeah the way i've run the boiler in the past is really simple it's just water there's no antifreeze there's no additives there's no anything you just one one charge of water in there it it circulates around for years it becomes deoxygenated and kind of black and mm. it doesn't rust anything because it's anaerobic. Wow, okay. Um, but you, you can't freeze, obviously. Yeah. So. Because now you have to really keep watching it. Whereas if you have a passive system that kind of does its own thing. I'm really into the. Hands off. Yeah, like I still, like I've kind of evolved on this since, you know, in the last 20 years since <laughs> I've been experimenting with this kind of stuff. I just want passive. Yeah. I want simple, few moving parts, inexpensive. One thing I like about this is like, we're like we didn't have a lot of money so like this stuff here, this this will be garbage someday, I guess. It could be recycled. Like the if these when like the, the you know the polycarbonate's good for like 20, 25 years. Yeah, these are probably good for that long. At the that posts, point, yeah. it's you know I mean that's like a high tunnel too, you know green. It, but it's not it's not trying to be a permanent thing. Yeah. So if it's a failure, well with the if yeah. if you know when I'm you know when I'm eighty, if I don't feel like doing it anymore. It's not like I've spent this huge amount of the earth and my resources building this yeah. concrete thing that could last for 300 years that maybe no one else wants to even use. Right. It's just like it's a- It's just a bunch of stones thrown It's a somewhat temporary dirt, building. Wood, the yeah. stones are just like, yeah. I would even say, cause like, okay, so you gotta have high humidity in here. So you might end up with, you know, metal rusting quite easily. But you could also argue that if you, if you wanted to, you could, would this stone wall stand on its own? Man, uh, no. if, if you stack it in a, you it, know. So, so this wouldn't. So, like, so what I started to say earlier. So this here, yeah, I, this is just kind of. I excavated. In yeah. As straight a face as I could with the tractor. Put the frame in front of it, mm -hmm. and basically, Crystal and I dumped stones behind it and did a little bit of arranging to try to make right. them a little bit more like. <laughs> here it but, looks very arranged, but then here it's like yeah. screw it. Yeah. <laughs> it just go. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We started. It's I a lot started of work to build a stone there. wall. Yeah. So. That isn't, but it, it'll, it's like a facing for the earth. I came across this cool thing after I had got almost to this far with it. I was, I was looking in the internet yeah. and I found out that the Soviet Union in the 30s, they were, they just wanted to be self-sufficient in everything. They're yeah. like, communism is better, we're gonna do it. And they, they, <laughs> they have no place in their country that they can grow oranges, right? Mm -hmm. But they wanted oranges, they'd been importing them from like Turkey or whatever. Right. So they decided that they're gonna grow oranges. And they, of course they had less resources than I have right now. Um, so they figured out this system where they got, they said they grew 200,000 pounds, I think of oranges a year in Ukraine. Wow. Actually in Crimea and Ukraine, where the war is right now. They dug trenches just about this wide, huh. just about this deep. Huh, but, four feet deep. But like 100 yeah. feet long. 200 feet long. They wow. did like covered like acres with this. They dug these trenches. They didn't have the wire. They used the stones, but it was pretty hokey. Huh. It was just, they took the stones and they just kind of let the sides were a little sloped. Yeah, so and the stones were kind of like leaning out, over, you know, right. so it didn't topple over. And they grew mandarins, uh, satsumas. So uh, wait, like, did they cover it with something? Not in the summer. In the, in the summer, right. it was just an open okay. pit. It was just like a long trench. Uh -huh. And they grew these these oranges, they, they planted them and they only let them get this high and they put a couple sticks or wires and mm -hmm. they grew them out kind of the same way I do the figs, like yeah. a step over trellised, really short thing. Mm -hmm. And they grew the whole bottom of the trench with oranges like a ground cover. Wow. And then in the winter, 
they put boards over it. They just threw boards over it and hay. And like every 20 feet, they put a little teeny glass window because it's all they had. Wow. Just enough light to keep yeah. the, 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 the citrus alive. Apparently this wow. particular kind of plant, it can survive for a couple months without much light. And in the winter, it doesn't freezing. need much light then. And they kept them from freezing that way. That's incredible. And they were growing in a climate not that different than here. They were growing yeah. oranges, basically. <laughs> Um, and you're keeping them low to the I'm ground. I'm sure it was a ton too. of work. I mean, I'm sure it's just a huge amount of manual labor to do it. But yeah. I'm like, ah, that's really cool. They they like had nothing, and they just and dug a hole and used the rocks yeah. and some boards. Well, it's amazing to me that you're no heat, no no glazing, not even any plastic or glass yeah. or anything. I mean, the goal is like you know you use the resources that are here to kind of rearrange them. You rearrange the resources that you have in yeah. a way passively that it just creates a, a climate where you can grow something that usually doesn't grow there. That's yeah. pretty incredible to be able to figure that out. So hopefully it'll work. The cool yeah. thing about here, we're the same latitude as Portugal, Spain, okay. um, really extreme southern France, yeah. middle Italy or Greece. And figs, like it's perfect, like the length of the day in the winter, the yeah. way, it's no problem. You know, like the sun angle and everything, the day length is identical to oh, what it is where they grow best. Okay. The only difference is they get the Gulf Stream and that, you know, that keeps everything that, warm. That, that, that European climate that keeps everything warmer in the winter. Right, whereas we get winter. And we oh, get this continental air masses coming down from Canada. Right. But if I can, uh, if I can moderate that, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> but it's like the right day length. It's so it's cool. You know, it's like that, not that cool. far off. Yeah. So you could. Yeah. And I so try, by a little I, alteration. I imagine grow. this this pit in like you know central Italy and with figs in it, and they'd grow great. If this was someone's yeah. courtyard and they had this four foot deep pit and they yeah. had figs in it. it Especially because they don't have the winter as aggressive as we might do. Yeah, but I mean, it's like being down in the ground, a yeah. little bit lower light, but no they problem. Make, they do make hardy figs, you know, don't they? Uh, they're kind of all the same. Yeah? Yeah, like the, like Chicago hardy. Yeah, the Chicago it's hardy. It's the same as okay. like anything else. I mean, maybe not anything else. What I found is that they're all hardy really to quite cold um, below the ground. And above the ground, they're all hardy to about 20 degrees. Yeah, oftentimes if you don't uh, cut them, then, or if, they, if you don't cover them with like a good set of mulch, then they'll start to really start to branch out. Like sometimes I've seen, like in New York City, we had uh, some figs that started off as like one stem and then if you don't cover them, they start to die back, but then they get multi-branched from the and roots. Yeah. yeah. And that's what, that's what generally, I mean, that's what always happened to mine in a high tunnel. The problem when that happens is that the, even though figs are great because the, the, the figs are born on this year's growth, not last year's for the most part, like an apple or something. So you could get figs off that new growth, but because it's coming back from the base, you don't get figs until like September. October and it's a like I don't really have a good market for them that late in the year I'm selling apples and people are into apples not figs uh, and B it's just it's like you don't have the heat that you need to really ripen them well hmm. so when I had the in-ground greenhouse before the figs would leaf out in February which is probably what they do in Italy right hmm. they leaf out in February they'd start initiating figs in April and I'd have fresh figs like right now like in July hmm. This would be like the peak harvest season for them. Hmm. So that's kind of what you're aiming. That's at what I'm for aiming here, for. Yeah, because yeah. then they're really good because they ripen in heat, you yeah, know, yeah, and they're yeah. it's like dry and hot. And then in November, it's kind of like everything's getting kind of damp and cool, and like you know, every night there's like a really heavy cold dew, and it's yeah. kind of it's not good for getting good figs. How are you planning to irrigate all this? Do, does it need a lot of water, or how are you watering? Stuff? Um, <laughs> I, interesting note: I have a high tunnel in Brookendale that has yeah. figs in it that I have done nothing with it. We abandoned yeah. it in the fall. It's abandoned. I mean, we just didn't move it yet in the yeah. fall. And I'm like, those figs are going to die. They're in ground. There's nothing I can do about it. You know, I'm not going to try to dig those up and move giant root balls here. I've got new you ones that I started product. from cuttings that are all ready to go for in here. They're alive. And they're this high, and they haven't been watered in like 10 months. Really? Are they outside though? No, they're in a high they're tunnel with a, a roof tunnel. over them. A huh. 30 by 70 tunnel. High I mean, it is so they dry. must get it is water like from dust. somewhere. Their right. roots go way, way, way down. Right. And, that's, and if you put a, a yeah. fig in a pot, 
on a concrete patio, the root will come out and it'll go wow. and it'll find so a they crack got really and it'll go through roots. the crack and it'll break that crack open wider. Wow. And then the root will grow down in, you know, 20 feet to where it hits water. Wow. They're so like you, so you probably don't even have to water it if it's I, I will, but yeah, yeah okay. but it's not as big a deal. But as the benefits also. It's more like keeping no... them from getting water when you don't want them to get water. I so see. They, so that you can, because like withholding water can actually help ripen them and keep them from splitting. And, huh. Yeah. But I'll have um, these pipes. This is the this is the whole. So inference. So that's the boiler. These yep. pipes here, coming up here, mm -hmm. are the irrigation for the farm. And there's one of them that goes oh, yeah. back to the well and the pump in the house. Yeah. And then there's what are there four more that go out all different directions around the whole orchard <laughs> that run um, drip lines everywhere. Oh. Wow. Everything has drip lines. There's like four rows. I still have to put it on, but everything else it's all all buried headers and, yeah. and drip lines. So you're connecting In those here, are... we'll have, I'll have a, a, a drip line on each row of figs, and then up in that area, because I do some propagating, I'll have like misters on timers and oh, stuff. Oh, cool, and yeah, like, yeah. Um, so you just run that from that same pipe that comes from the well. That's awesome. That's all that, all yeah. that infrastructure that's buried under there. Yeah, plus you're already near it, because you said you buried a whole bunch of stuff here. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, there's water here, the electric panels on the other side of that wall right there, yeah. easy to access for wow. in here. That's really cool. So what are the next steps in building this? So I'm, I'm putting another row of posts up in the top. Um, it's, it's a, frankly, it's a little challenging to like know how much structure to put in the roof of a greenhouse. You wanted like if you like, designed it to hold all the snow that would fall on it for the winter, yeah. it would have to be much beefier than this. Okay. These are these are full two by fours on three foot centers because I have six foot polycarbonate. I see. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's and I didn't want to intercept too much light, so I felt like that was good for this span. But that span yeah. there is a little bit more, and I want something intermediate on it. Yeah, because or I would have need needed to beef up past two by fours in the middle there. I didn't want to use like two by sixes or something. The more you get, the sun angle in the winter is so low. Yeah. If you stand here and look, you're like missing a lot of the sky just because of the rafters. Yeah, we've actually seen greenhouses where they use that as a strategy to reduce the amount of lights, to use really thick beams. Oh yeah. The when the sun hits it, it actually blocks the light from coming in. Like for what purpose? Uh, this was in um, or like, a, like Singapore. A, like a living space. It's just like crazy oh, yeah. tropical greenhouse. Make greenhouses yeah. that are cooler and not hotter. Yeah. Yeah. This was like the inverted okay. scenario where oh, that's cool. having a greenhouse in a really warm climate, and then you need to keep it cool. So they had glass that has like all kinds of coatings on it yeah, to you reflect can spray off the sun and, and say yeah. cloth and. But this, so you're trying to keep the them low, but strong enough to actually yeah. carry some snow load. Yeah. So my experience before is. Um, that, that snow slides right off that polycarbonate. If this yeah. is a 512 pitch, okay, and it's and it should be enough that the snow is just going to slide right off it, especially because this will mostly be about freezing. It creates a little water layer on it and melts it as it falls. Right. Um, but I wanted a little bit more structure up there, so I'm going to run another row post just every six feet, not every three feet. These are these are every three feet because I'm mm. I'm holding back the earth too. Yeah, and it turns out they're not doing much to hold it back. There's almost no strain on them. Um, you can see this stuff bent when yeah, I put the, the rocks panels, in. Panels the panels bent when I put the rocks in, but they're, they're pretty floppy. Like actually, they they don't yeah. really do much. Um, so the posts hold most of that rock back. You think? I don't think there's much that's holding the rock. I mean, a back. lot of that I think must if you be just took sitting on itself too. Yeah, I think if you disconnected the posts and it was just standing there, it might not even topple yeah. over. You know, it's like there's not that much pu push on it. Uh huh. Um, but I wanted to to make it, you know, just good enough. So I, I put them every three feet and it worked yeah. with the structure. So next step is some posts there. Yep. And then I think I'm almost ready to start putting a polycarbonate on. Um, and, and I think I'll do the vents last. I'll, I'll, they'll go pretty quick to put the polycarbonate on. Yeah, now is that just, uh, what is that, a double layer? It's a double wall. A triple, like no, I just got the double wall. Double, yeah. This stuff's expensive. Yeah. Um, we have a Mennonite farm supplier that gets a pretty good deal on these six by 24 foot panels. Wow. Which are huge. Yeah, that's very they're, long. They're, um, they're very floppy. It's, I feel like an ant trying to lift a sheet of paper. You can yeah, lift yeah. one corner, but the rest of it doesn't even move, you know? So <laughs> we're gonna have to have a party to put that on. Yeah. Not because it's heavy, but just because it's like, it's just so floppy, it's, it's stacked right there. Yeah, should we take um, a look at that? Let's take a look at some of that. 
So that'll be next. That should go pretty quick. There's all these aluminum extrusions that that goes on with. It goes right into the ground on the sides. It's oh, great. So you're doing it's the rot sides proof. of the building. It too. doesn't rot. I just yeah. run it. I did that on the high tunnel too. I love it. It just runs right into the earth. It's a little teeny bit of insulation and thermal break on the earth. And yeah. it, um, so I've dug a trench there for that. So how and deep I'm also are you going to make some, it go in? This deep because, boy, this, this trench took me all evening last night. Oh, jig it by hand, huh? I didn't have any. You can't really get I in there. I don't have a mini machine. backhoe. Wouldn't it be yeah. cool to have like a mini little, just for digging? Tiny out? little arm. To... Just like a little this wide, just like a shovel full. That you could... I could use that for <laughs> trenches. Yeah. And, definitely... and the other thing is, I got the pipes. I got this marked here is where my pipes are buried under there. Yeah. You hit them? Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't want to go any deeper. Yeah. <laughs> they're down, I think they're a foot below that. But, but you can always um, build this up a little bit more, too. Um, so I'm going to put some styrofoam in there like I did there too, mm -hmm. just going straight down in. I think yeah. that'll be good enough. Um, and then I will probably pour a concrete slab oh, over nice. most of this top part because it's so nice to have a concrete floor in a seed starting greenhouse. You know, you're spilling potting mix all the time and things and it, yeah, it, it grows things, weeds. And it just grows like, stuff under the bench, it, right. Yeah, it's all... Plus yeah. the concrete will help you with your heat storage too. Yeah. Which will help for the starting seats. It, it's, it's all going to be good. And I'm going to have on the, on the side towards the building here, you notice yeah. it's raised up a bit. And it has to be because of the way I did the foundation for the building. Yeah. I want to have, so i got to raise it up a little bit more, actually. So there's going to be a line of posts here lined up with this. Mm -hmm. And then I can actually make a little low wall on those posts. Yeah. And then kind of along the back is going to be like a raised kind of a yeah, I can platform. Yeah, and I'm actually going to put heat in that, either from the boiler mm. or electric roof mount right. cables. So I'm it's like sure a desk. I'm not sure which I'm going to use. <laughs> I'm going to put it about a couple feet high with yeah. like sand and gravel in there and heat. And it's going to be a heated bench for getting stuff started earlier. That's like I awesome. do a lot of cuttings of, of so, stuff that I, the bottom heat really helps. So that will be, uh, so that yeah. will be raised up so you can just, it, it creates like a bench. Yeah, it'll be like a bench, yeah. The whole thing like it'll only thing. be, it'll be a low bench, but then yeah. when the plants are on it, it'll be oh, good height to be, water them and yeah, all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's great. And then you have a concrete floor this way. And then more benches and stuff out here. It's a really nice design, honestly. I love the view out this end. And there'll be a door here, yeah. a door there. That provides a lot of ventilation too. Mm. You know, right. Just leave the doors open. Yeah, it's really cool to work it, with the slope it, like it's this. It's got, I, I, it's, you know, a, a lot of the decisions about the design of it are based on things like, you know, how does this farm, does the yard work out here? We'll have a, another high tunnel where the tractor is there, that high tunnel, yep. this greenhouse. Crystal may want to put up another seed starting greenhouse where, the, where that tractor is. I don't know. Uh, probably not. I think this will be enough. Um, yeah, you'll have a lot of space. But just to have it all near each other. So yeah. you got the hose, and you've got, you know, in the, in the spring, we've got pallets with plants on them, you know, yeah. out hardening off and stuff, and just have that all right together, all on one level as much as possible. Right. Cause, I like it. It's yeah. cool. It's really nice. It's, it's really great. To, I think what's really cool about it is that the passiveness and being getting very crafty with, you know, resources like oh let's just use stone instead of concrete and then finding a benefit in there as well yeah it's not just like oh we have to do with less no we're actually getting more out of something cheaper yeah. it's really clever. challenges yeah make yeah. you think harder and exactly. like exactly you know and even if not everything metal... not everything works you know not every idea works but i think um i think there's a lot of potential i see people doing this on the internet too when i first did this yeah like it was almost 20 years ago i don't even think i had internet Right. access at that point. I was living without electric. I don't even, I don't know, maybe people were doing it. I, obviously the people that made the Wallapinis were making them, you know, in the Andes or whatever. Yeah. But like, but like people weren't clued in with this idea. And I tell people I'm building this underground greenhouse and they looked at me like I had three heads, you know, like, yeah. well, how's, that, how's that gonna work? They gotta be up, you know? Yeah. And I've come across it more and more and it seems like it's like a thing now. People are catching on to the idea. Yeah. 
I think it's one of those so things I'm, that's been always around. It's always existed, but people it, constantly well, like have to rediscover thing. it. Like that yeah. Russian thing. Like that's so, I, so I wanted to do something. I figure if I'm going to do something, it should be different and then maybe contribute a little bit to people figuring yeah. it out. And this is kind of halfway between like the wallapini things that have like the pallets holding back the dirt in the sides. And I look at yeah. them and I'm like, that's going to last for two years. <laughs> what, what happens when it rains? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so sort of halfway between that and like the fancy concrete thing. Yeah. Um, and it's, well, anyone could do it. It's really low tech. Yeah, it's like what's so nice about tech. it is like the more of these get built, especially in today's day, the more information documentation you have about its performance. Yeah. And then the better decisions you can make about building new ones in the future. Hey, honestly, if yeah. it doesn't work out, take out the polycarbonate and turn it into a giant root cellar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could do that too. It's already like in the earth and you could just like, you know, cover it all up. <laughs> you no, it's going to work great. It's going to, Yeah, I, I well, think it's, I think it's going to be fantastic. Thank you so much for showing this yeah. and we'll have to come back to see how this turns out and when you got your figs in there and the seed starting. Give it a month. It's on. Oh, a month. I gave it. Yeah. So I've got I've got about um, done in a month. I've got about 3 weeks into this so far. Okay. And wow. it's been it's just like a day here and a day there, you know. Yeah. Um, cause we're trying to run the rest of the farm at the same time. Yeah. And I took like I took 2 weeks and kind of worked on it like 4 days of the week. And it felt like everything else started to slip, so I had to kind of like quit on it for now and catch yeah. up on the everything. Next time we come back, we should be eating figs, Christine. But it and should goat be. Cheese. There's figs on one of the figs that's going to go in there. A couple of them have little baby figs. Oh. In there. <laughs> well, that, that, I mean, once they're in the right environment, then they'll do even better. Yeah. But yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Cool, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Amazing. my Dreams are sweet when you're not laying me down to sleep, not dreaming. So I can't remember what I had done the last time you were here. Well, you definitely didn't have the any of the. It was just the bones, really. Oh, I so, didn't have the polycarbonate. On. No, okay. not at all. Oh, cool. You were, you you had made the wonderful analogy of feeling like an ant carrying one of these large polycarbonate oh, yeah. things. And, and I was like, well, who else helped you actually with this? No, we, Crystal and I managed it. It was just totally calm, like oh not a bit of wind. And we kind of we kind of managed it. It wasn't that bad. Wow. And they, it, it turned out it's kind of okay if they whap the ground now and then. They're pretty tough. In fact, there was one sheet that was left here in the pile, and there was this huge wind, one of these you know, rainstorms we've had. And it picked up, I had two by fours on it to weight it down. And it was for the vent, for the, the little pieces up at the top. I was gonna cut it all up. And it picked up in the wind and f f whapped against the fence, knocked the fence, which is just kind of nailed up there anyway, off and folded itself in two around that post. <laughs> and I came out in the rain and I like dragged it into the shed and it was totally fine. It like, it like bent it, but then it like popped back. Amazing. It's good so stuff. Anyway, so you wouldn't have that if it were this, if this were glass. <laughs> no, it's really tough. Like hail and stuff is generally okay. Um, I like it. It's it makes these little microplastic like things when you cut it. I don't like that. Yeah, but. that's unfortunate. So anyway. Ooh, this is already pretty cozy in here. It would be actually if I if I didn't have the vent open, it could be really hot. It would be like a hundred in here. Oh, but, on uh, this day, it's already even like even yeah, wow. just with a bit because I've got the vents open because I was working in here doing okay. electric and it was hot. I was actually hot. Um, oh, you got your open. figs in. Look at this. So oh, yeah. Man. So I put in. These are ones that I did as cuttings last year that I've been kind of nursing along in four-inch pots, and they really needed a place to go. And I put them in like three weeks ago. They've doubled in size since then. They're very happy with it. Well, you know, after you had mentioned those tr Russian trenches for oranges, I, I looked it up. Yeah. That is so cool, and now it reminds me of that. That's it right there, right? Yeah. And it seems to be, um, you know, with all the, we've had like eight inches of rain in like the last three weeks. It's been unbelievable, um, the drought that we had in summer. And I had, at first, the water was kind of flowing, not drained away from the building well enough. Yeah. And it was coming, kind of running in a little bit. So I got a little wet down in there. I got a little worried. But now that I got it redirected, it's drying up. And there's, there's a drainage tile that's draining out. So I think it's going to be good. And uh, the soil settled a little bit. Oh, I see out that. there, yeah. my rocks are a little funky. I can squeeze more rocks through the holes. And I'm kind of, I'm still filling in on top. 
kind of fixing it as I go. But it's not, I mean, it's not really structural, so it's kind of, I think it's fine. We'll see what it does. Yeah. Easy to fix system. And I spent, so these were these six foot by 24 foot sheets, which were kind of sketchy to put up, but it went yeah. really quick. It was one day. And then I spent a week and a half on the vent here on this. Roof vent that opens up. So that Ooh. opens up the whole roof The whole vent. top four feet wow. of the roof opens you, it up. It didn't seem like you were really expending any energy with that either. No, it's, well, this is like geared. It's yeah. like an engine. Pump. So. That's it was, cool. It works. I wasn't sure it was going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was a little hard to build up there. Watch your watch on these yeah, things. Yeah, I they see stick. that. You could probably uh, skewer your head. This that. is going to be like, um, it's either going to be benches for propagating, or it'll be in-ground figs or citrus right. or something in here. So no one will be walking here. Uh, so there's that, it really, really, really helps to cool it off. Like it instantly takes all the heat out. And that combined with the two vents down there, at the bottom, one on each side. Yeah. And I have to manually open and close those, but that's not a big deal. And then there's what I'm setting up now is a system of automatic vents where that that vent there, that aluminum louver vent, mm -hmm. and this one up on the opposite side there will open up automatically on a thermostat. Interesting. So there's a, there's a, there's, there'll be a couple thermostats mounted up here. I'm just bringing the power in. A couple thermostats there. One will, you can set a temperature for the vents to open. So you could set that at like 70. And at 70 degrees, the vents would open and the cross breeze and natural convection would kind of probably take care of it like in the winter, just fine. And then if it gets a bit hotter and you're not around, the, the second thermostat you can set like five degrees higher for a fan. And there's that blower fan, that exhaust fan there. And that would suck air in through those vents and out the exhaust. And then when I'm around, you know, like, you know, you just open and close the roof and the, and the lower vents as needed. Probably can stay open most of the summer. But in the spring and the fall, if you go away for a few hours, like, we've cooked a whole greenhouse worth of stuff. Because oh you, if you don't have automatic controls, it's yeah. nerve wracking. Because you leave in the morning and it's 40, like to go to farmer's market. It's 40 degrees and you don't want to, like, open all the doors. And right. then it's cloudy and rainy and then it gets really sunny and 70. And then you come back and it's like 140 in there. Well, it seems so, like you have adequate ventilation. I mean, you, you're putting it on all sides and even on the can upper. Never, you actually can't have too much. It's like, it's really a, a greenhouse. I've had a couple that are like too hot and yeah. hard to ventilate and that's really unpleasant. Yeah. And this isn't really meant to be like, um, like a really hot greenhouse. It's not like what I would choose to like grow peppers in or something. Right, like these figs could actually manage it. I want a moderate kind it. of environment as even as possible. Like even in the summer, like maybe the in-ground one I had before, it would go up to 85. But the high tunnel, you know, could be 120, even with everything wide open and the fan going. Yeah, 85 is not bad at all. No, it's not bad. It's yeah. like outside temperature. Yeah. It's like the same. But then at night, it stays like 10 degrees warmer than outside. Well, We're going to pour a concrete floor here. That may not get done this year. And then is that your irrigation system set up over there? Yeah, the temporary so. Temporary one or? Yeah, yeah, this was, this was just pipe sticking out of the dirt bank before. So there's um, water in from the well from the house. And then I have multiple, this is, there's two main lines that run the whole farm. We're irrigating eight acres with this. These two lines control all the, the drippers, drip lines and everything for the whole farm. Wow. This goes to another building we're going to build, yeah, a processing building. This goes to the other two greenhouses there. And then here, I've got a, uh, this is um, a solenoid for a, a timer. Mm -hmm. And I've got it misting every, for two seconds every minute. And I'm doing some fig cuttings at the wrong time of the year, and maybe it'll work and maybe it won't. But if it works, I'll have figs to sell next year, and otherwise I gotta wait another year. Yeah, otherwise um, they'll, they'll just stay like that in stasis until spring. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't care as long as they grow roots. They can yeah. just be like in those trays until spring, overwintering. Yeah. And then I'll be able to pot them up early in the spring in here, and by the time it's the season to sell them in June and July, will be, you know, they'll be almost that big, actually. Yeah. 
I put a Meyer lemon down in there. It started blooming right after oh, I put it in. Wow, look at that. Yeah, it has flowers went on to it. Tioga Gardens and they, uh, it just on a whim and uh, got a Meyer lemon and uh, a jasmine vine. And I put the jasmine vine down and it's blooming too. That's cool. So I think both of those, I had one of the Meyer lemon before in a greenhouse. It froze a little bit, but not much. And it, it liked it. Well, we could already <laughs> hear that it, it's raining outside like crazy. I know. It's dry in here, but this is a great way to always test whether your drainage works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was initially, there was a river running here. There was actually water. It was coming off the roof of the shed and, and just it was just directing right down here. <laughs> well, this is looking great. So you're gonna have a door somewhere here? Or? Yeah, actually there's a cutout when we built this building right to the side of this panel here. There's a door I'll cut out. I'll put a door in there so we can go right from inside out into here in the winter, not have to go out in the snow at all. And I just got uh, latches for the other doors in the mail yesterday, so I'm gonna have those all latched. See, I got a little issue right there. See, oh, it's yeah. coming down. I see. And it runs. Can you do like some type of flashing? I or... can do something, yeah. I think, I think I need to maybe put a lip up on the inside of that threshold. Yeah. I don't care if it gets a little wet. It's, you know, it's dirt, but. It's hard when, like most greenhouses don't have any overhang, any eave at all but it would really be kind of nice. But there's not a good way to do it without a lot of wood, which makes it opaque, and then it's not a greenhouse anymore. You might be able to get away with just putting one of those little A-frame like awnings that you would do on like a normal house, right? Can you just like... Maybe. Or can you actually even put gutters anywhere? Can you assemble gutters on a greenhouse? Actually, those big, those, those greenhouses that just go over acres, they have yeah. a gutter down each valley yeah. that goes down pipes in the interior. Because that wouldn't take up too much uh, sun space, you know, at the end of no, the day. No, that could be, that could yeah. work. Yeah. That'd be cool. But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is looking, this is looking amazing. And honestly, it's so cool, Scott. Like, you built this yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not your first one, but it's a it's I different. Think, I, think it, I think it costs, like, about four and a half thousand. That's not bad. Which is actually really, really, really good. Like it's, how much square footage is this? Uh, that's a good question. It's 25 by 36. Very cool. It's, yeah, it's a, I think it's the kind of minimum size to make this kind of scheme work. I think like a 10 by 10 wouldn't work. You wouldn't have enough thermal mass in the dirt that you've insulated. It's all about like insulating as much dirt as you can. And again, remind me, um, you know, was there any kind of you have like a little uh, ladder coming up here. But oh, I'm going to build steps here. Oh, you're going to build steps. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so, so many things aren't done, right? Yeah. So I got to dig this out. I'm going to build some steps. I don't know if they're going to be stone or... I was looking for like a fire escape kind of thing. I thought that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> but like some kind of steps going down here, maybe wood. And then I'm going to do stone pass down there and mulch, finish mulching everything. I got space for more, more big varieties. I want to get some new varieties. And then up here, we're going to pour concrete slab. And then we'll have like bent greenhouse benches here to do propagating and, and seed starting up here. How many big plants do you need that you reckon uh, you could sell like at the farmer's market, like for good, for decent enough production? The, you know, oh, like how many would you things? need to plant to go? Well, yeah. it, I mean, actually, I mean, it's all an experiment. No one has really like pulled it off. Everyone like, You'll have a year or two where you get a bunch of figs and you see the promise, but it's really hard to get them ripe at the time when there's a market for them in this climate. So we'll see. It, it, you have to, it's really hard, especially if you have like infrastructure you've built like this. Mm -hmm. Like say I were to do this for 20 years and this thing costs four and a half thousand to build and maybe another 500 a year to maintain or electric for it or whatever. And then you've got to spread that over that 20 years and then see, take that off from what your gross sales are. Right. It's, it's not, I'm not doing it for profit. I'm doing it for fun and, and just because uh, I love figs. Yeah. And, and also I sell those. I, that's what I thought you meant at first. Oh, I see. See, like this year may not work because I'm doing them late. Yeah. But usually I do my cuttings in June and July. Mm -hmm. And for the next year, I have about 200 plants that I sell for $15 a piece. No yeah. problem. And I sell out every year. It's, it's so fun because people have like memories of figs with their... A lot of Italian families, other immigrant families, 
a lot of people have a granddad that grew figs or whatever, and they're just excited about it. And it's a funhouse plant, mm -hmm. and they they easy to grow. And the figs, like if you look at those there, they're just mm -hmm. like popping out on them. I mean, yeah, he doesn't have to be like an apple tree and grow for a few years to make a fig. It'll make a fig the first year. Right. So it's really fun to watch them grow, and then they're sweet and wonderful. So people are like excited about figs and. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much for this update. You've done such a phenomenal job. It's been really fun to see this whole process come together, yeah. even though we're not there every day. It's neat to be able to document it and just see the progress. Yeah. I woke up in the middle of the night, opened my eyes in my own oh mind, dreaming, dreaming you. Well, all my dreams are sweet when I lay me down to sleep, not dreaming you. First, don't give me no fight It's only one thing in the middle of the night I need That's dreaming of you Well, all my dreams are sweet When I lay me down to sleep I'm dreaming of you Are you enjoying the videos we produce? Consider liking, subscribing, tipping, and hitting the notifications bell. It helps support the channel and the greater community. We're reinvesting 10% of our Google AdSense revenue back into the Finger Lakes community, so your viewership and support goes a long way. We'll see you in the next video.